Hello and welcome to my channel Marcus Codes. This is the second episode of my four-part series about the sender authentication package in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. If you missed the first episode, make sure to watch it right now. It's linked directly here in the video. This episode focuses on the sender policy framework that is also configured as part of the sender authentication package. That sender policy framework, or in short SPF, is an authentication measure for your sending domain. It allows you to define the systems, the IP addresses that are um, allowed and verified by you to send emails from that domain. To put that into place and make it available for all the email service providers that receive emails from your um, domain, it is published as a text record in the domain name system, so the DNS. Um, in that, you add the IP addresses of your sending systems. So in Marketing Cloud with an SAP, you get a dedicated IP address that would be part of that um, configuration. What's also possible is adding a host name that is then resolved by um, the email provider. So if you have an SPF record for that domain as well, um, that is also looked up and added to that record. So it works recursively in, in that matter. Um, what the email service provider is then instructed to do with um, an SPF record is to validate it for the given um, envelope from address. So if someone um, sent from your uh, domain, uh, from an address of your domain, um, the email provider then checks your uh, DNS entries for um, an SPF entry and verifies if the IP address is the allowed one. Another thing that can be part of your um, SPF configuration is a policy where you instruct the email service provider how to handle emails that don't comply with your rules and um, originate from a different system. However, keep in mind it isn't mandatory for the email service providers to um, comply with your policy so they can have a different handling um, that is stricter or less strict than your um, policy that is in place. But most major providers comply with um, those or have stricter rules in place. This is how an SPF record um, looks like. It is split in three parts. The first one um, giving a version and uh, telling um, the servers that it is an SPF record. The second one um, telling the, the email providers um, your uh, host name, for example, that can have another SPF record in place or if you just want to add a single IP address, you can also use the IP directive um, that is um, placed below the example here. And the third thing is the policy. So uh, in that we can define what happens if uh, an email is originating from a system that isn't specified within our list. For that policy, you have three options. The first one mentioned here is the strictest um, option that instructs the email service provider to drop every communication that isn't originating from one of the allow listed servers that you uh, included in the SPF record. The second one isn't that strict anymore, but it instructs the email server to flag that message or to put it in a quarantine or um, spam folder but it doesn't instruct it to delete it altogether, so it is possible um, that the recipient can have a look at that message. And the least strict directive um, shown here at the bottom, I don't recommend it because it just instructs the server to do nothing at all and deliver um, an email from a um, yeah, non-verified source as it would with a verified uh, email from your Marketing Cloud instance. 
What are the benefits of that um, SPF records? First and foremost, um, you have a better inbox placement because um, the email service providers uh, have more trust in you and in your domain because they can see that you um, have an, an interest in securing everything and um, authenticating um, messages originating from your uh, domain. And the second benefit that is also linked to it is you make sure that it isn't that easy to uh, send phishing emails from your um, email addresses or to yeah, spoof your identity. So that makes it harder for um, attackers or malicious uh, email senders to um, yeah, misuse your um, domain and your uh, good reputation for that matter. In order to check if those SPF records are in place correctly, you have the possibility to do that from your local machine using a command line tool um, or using one of the available online tools. Um, when doing it on your local machine, you have the option to use the dig command on macOS, which is the one uh, that I prefer to use, but it's also possible to use the nslookup command that's available on Windows, macOS, as well as Linux. Let's say we want to check if Salesforce did set the uh, SPF record correctly, we type in dig mail.salesforce.com and txt as we are interested in the txt records. You can see a bunch of information displayed, um, including which server replied to our request and all the txt records for that domain um, that are shown in the answer section. The one in the yellow box is what interests us the most because it's the SPF record for the domain and we can verify um, what has been published um, as an SPF record here. To do the exact same lookup using the nslookup command, we type in nslookup minus type equals txt and then again mail.salesforce.com. As you can see, um, the result is more or less the same as for the dig command. It's not that detailed, um, but gives all the information that we require to check um, that SPF re record. If you're using the dig command, you also have the possibility to uh, use a shorthand um, result. So using dig plus short, then mail.salesforce.com and txt again. You then only get the values of the text records in the DNS system um, as a result. So it's just a yeah, shorter version of the, of the result, um, which can be used if you need to automatically do something with the result or if there's a bunch of TXT records and you just want um, the, the values to see. Um, what also might be interesting for you is how you can check if an email that you received passed that um, SPF check and not only if the records have been published correctly. You can also do that by having a look at the um, headers of your, uh, of your email. Um, so you just need to go to your inbox and then um, search for an option that um, is named some, somewhat like few source, few headers, or few original, that depends on your email client. If you're using Microsoft Outlook, it's called few source. Um, if you select that option, a text editor is opened that uh, includes a text representation of that email with all the headers present. You then search for the authentication results. That's what's interesting for us. Um, because that includes the SPF um, validation. You can then see SPF equals and the result of the SPF check. In our case, it's a pass. And then we get the additional um, information which sender IP has been used. So now you are equipped with all the knowledge and the tools to um, do basic checks and uh, understand what records are in place for your sending domain. I hope you liked that explanation and if so, please like that video 
and to keep up to date and don't miss any updates of my channel, um, please subscribe to that channel. In the next episode, I'm going to focus on the domain keys identified mail, which is also an authentication uh, method that is included in the send authentication package. Thanks for watching and have a great day.